Hey guys, Martin here. A uh, new episode of We're Still Here. I'm going to do a brief introduction because I have a lot to say. Or at least I have a lot of feelings and I don't know if I'm going to get them all out in this video, but I, I just want to get going real quick. Uh, this is a series about uh, me coping with depression, but it's not just about me. It's about uh, depression in general and it's about hopefully just uh, communicating the fact that depression isn't something that we have to keep to ourselves and it's not something that we have to suffer through alone. You know, that's the main thing that I want to put out there with this this vlog series that a lot of people say is just a lot of whining. And, you know, you can look at it that way. But uh, the way I choose to look at it and the way I choose, the, the way I do feel about it is that it's my way of hopefully normalizing something that is uh, a bit of a taboo subject. Not even a taboo subject, but it's just something nobody really wants to talk about. It's not that we can't talk about it. It's that people don't want to talk about it. And that's 100% understandable from both perspectives, you know? I myself was diagnosed with clinical depression, oh, must be like at least two years ago now. I wish I could remember the date, it's just been so long that I've been dealing with it. And uh, no, I don't seem very moody, I don't seem very under the weather. I'm actually, I've been having a, a really good month for the most part. There's been some ups and downs, mostly ups this month, I have to say. It's been a really good month for me. But I'm still dealing with depression, I'm still dealing with a lot of these negative uh, impulses and thoughts and feelings and experiences, and uh, it's just a cloud that hangs over my head a lot of the time, but talking about it helps, and that's why I do this. Talking about it helps me, and I'm, and I'm helping myself, and I'm, I'm picking myself up after I fell down <laughs> you know, that's this whole thing, this whole thing. You know the, the the image set that's going around, or has been going around for a while, of Snorlax's uh, animation in Pokemon, his, like, uh, fighting animation, his, uh, you know, the image they use for him, how he slowly gets up every uh, after every game, every new game that comes out, he gets up a little bit more. That's what these videos are for me. They are my attempt to stand up after I've been lying down uh, voluntarily for a long time. Uh... And, and and the point of talking about it is that it gets other people thinking about it and it gets other people talking about it and hopefully it helps them, you know, pick themselves up or help others to pick themselves up. That's the whole point of this. That's what this series is about. And uh, this particular episode is uh, definitely an attempt to pick myself up because uh, there's been a bit of a, a, bit of a blow to the gut uh, this week. Like, a, more than a bit. Uh, it's a, a huge... A huge downer has come along, and uh, I wanted to talk about it, so uh, this is me talking about it. I remember the first chat room I was ever a regular member of, because it was a very dominant part of my life for a long time. It was a Mystery Science 33000 chat room on IRC, uh, on the Sci-Fi Channel's uh, IRC network, uh, where we talked about MST3K. And uh, it was uh, a big part of my life. And uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 was one way that I got to know a lot of people. It was one way that I, I shared a lot of similar interests with people because of the show. Uh, and it was one way for me to, to, get out, to get out of my comfort zone and socialize, at least online. Obviously, it's easier to do online than it is to do in real life. And Mystery Science Theater 3000 helped me a great deal. And it helped me get to know people. But by getting to know these people in this MST3K chat room, they introduced me to other shows that I didn't know about because living in England, we didn't get a lot of the same TV shows that you got in America. Uh, we don't even get the same commercials, you know. So, I, you know, talking to people from America, from across the pond, uh, it got me to know a lot about media in general that I was missing out on. And one of the, the cartoons, because let's face it, I love cartoons. I'm a big I'm a big cartoon nerd. Uh was Space Ghost Coast to Coast, which was a staple of Cartoon Network at the time. It was pre-Adult Swim, it was pre-anything like Adult Swim. Space Ghost Coast to Coast was introduced to me by my close friends. Like all of my close friends at the time loved it. Still love it. We still talk about it. You know, I still see people talking about it on Facebook because of how much they love that show, continue to love that show. And I still love that show. I have a lot of very, 
positive memories of just watching those episodes and talking about them with my friends online. I just got, I, I dove into that show. I dove into it and I watched every episode. I watched every clip I could find on the internet. I watched everything. I loved the show before I'd even seen it because of just the quotes people would share with me and the clips and the, and the voices that the characters would say, would, would, would use. And I remember being very struck by the talent of, of the voice over artists. And it shocked me when I learned that a number of them were played by the same person. C. Martin Croker, who played the voices of Zorak and Maltar. And uh, I learned very recently that Zorak specifically, and uh, it's no surprise, Zorak was the breakout character of not just Space Ghost Coast to Coast, but of Cartoon Planet. And C. Martin Croker was obviously a big part of that. He provided the voice. Obviously, it's inspired by the original Space Ghost character, but he made it his own. And Zorak was very much the foil to Space Ghost's straight man, so to speak, uh, in future episodes. In later episodes, he wouldn't be so much of a straight man, but all the time, Zorak was the comedic foil to him. So Zorak was like the, the reason to watch the show for a lot of people. He was the bad guy, you know, he said a lot of the, the, the stuff that, you know, kids wanted to hear, you know. He, he, he wasn't a nice person, but he was a funny bad guy, you know. Uh... And and he had like probably the best voice, you know. Everybody wants. Everybody has their own Zorak impression, you know. The same way that we all have a Beavis and Butthead. Space Ghost Coast to Coast was a, a hugely influential show, and Zorak was no small part of that. It was Adult Swim before Adult Swim existed. It was doing things with cartoons that, you know, sometimes wasn't very kid friendly. Like certainly the style of humor, you know, was more appropriate for an adult audience or at least a, a teenage audience. And uh, young adults appreciated it more than the children would because of the way it was written. In a way, it wasn't written in a pandering style. It was written in a very intelligent, mature, very esoteric, strange kind of way at times. And kids appreciated that, or at least the teenage kids that I would hang out with in chat, the chat rooms would appreciate it. Because I was a teenage kid at the time as well. I'm not, I wasn't this 33-year-old man talking to you. But I still remember very strongly those memories of watching the show and sharing those memories with my friends and being very inspired by it. And of course, as a result of Space Ghost Coast to Coast, you had Adult Swim. Which, if you followed me for any amount of time, you know, I'm hugely influenced by most of the properties that Adult Swim came out with, certainly during its initial years. Aqua Teen Hunger Force, where C. Martin Croker played the roles of Dr. Weird and Steve, which were, I've referenced many times. And uh, he also animated a lot for Adult Swim projects. He did a lot of original animation, which the style was part of what made the, the show's charming. And he died this week, Clay Martin Croker. He died. And I'm still kind of coming to terms with it because it's such a big part of my life that he influenced. There are a lot of people who have died this year, but none of them have directly influenced me the way that C. Martin Croker has because, you know, I, I love David Bowie's music, but I can't say that I've ever been interested in pursuing a career as a musician I, I mean I, I love you know a lot of Gene Wilder's work but I don't think he, he's never really directly influenced me or my style or my 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 life but Clay Martin Croker was there for me when I was a kid he was there for me when I was a kid and he got me he introduced me to all my friends you know he introduced me to those those people who were were, a, were they they helped formulate my existence you know that guy was there for me even indirectly he was there for me and and he's gone at a very a, a relatively young age he should he was in his 50s but it's still far too young to lose someone like that he still he was still working he was still working and he was still creating and he was still entertaining and he was still by all accounts, making people's lives better. It hurts even more than it should because I had the chance to tell him how much he'd helped me. And, and no, I don't think he helped me any more than he helped anybody else. 
which isn't to say, you know, he didn't help me, but I'm sure he helped a lot of his personal friends a lot more than he helped some guy who watched his show. But without him, without the work that he did, without without the voices and without the animation, without the art and without just the the memories of what he did and what he's left behind, I wouldn't be who I am. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't be who I am. I can say that definitively, that I wouldn't be who I am without him. And he's gone. And I had the chance to tell him. Because I was at a convention, I'm pretty sure it was Momocon, uh, where he was tables away from me, a few tables away from me. And he was there, and he was, you know, relatively easy to approach by all accounts. And I was doing my thing, and I was doing, I was just talking to people, and I was, you know, doing the, the autographs, and I was signing, and I was selling, and I was talking to all... People wanted to come over and talk to me, and I didn't want to leave my table because I didn't feel... I never feel like it's worth taking the time for myself, or just, you know, spending some time just expo exploring the convention. I never, I never feel very motivated to do that. And so even though he was maybe 20, 30 feet away from me. I never stood up and told him. Mariana, my wife, went over and got me a signed print because as soon as I'd heard that he was at the convention, I, I, I said out loud, oh my God, that guy, he is a huge part of why I am the way I am. And it's really cool that he's at a show and that I'm at the show as well and that, you know, who knows if our paths will cross. And I had the chance to make the effort to go over and say, Hey man, if you hadn't done half the things you did with your life, I wouldn't be here. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do the things that I do. And I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't take the time, even for five minutes, to go over and say thank you. I didn't know how. I didn't think that I would be able to explain, because there's been so many times when I've had the chance to tell people these things, and I haven't been able to because I don't understand how, and I don't understand, and I don't think they understand or care. But I should have taken the chance. And this, I, I hate to make this about me. It's not about me. But he, I, I feel like I should have told him, and I feel like maybe a small part of his life would have been improved if he'd just known one more person had been improved because of him and because of the things he'd done with his life. You know? And when I hear those words, I, I'm sure there are some people saying that about me or even about you. You know, we all improve each other's lives bit by bit. And he improved the lives of likely millions of people. And it hurts to know he's gone. And it hurts to know he can't do that anymore. And that's what I'm dealing with right now. And it's a stupid thing to cry over, I'm sure you'll probably think, but... I had the chance to just show someone appreciation and I didn't take it. Because I thought so little of myself. And now, I don't know. I don't know if I feel worse. I don't know if I feel better. I know I feel strongly that that there was a man, there was a man who just did, for, for all intents and purposes, when he was speaking into a microphone as the voice of an alien mantis that wanted to destroy uh, a superheroic talk show host, that he probably thought he wasn't doing anything important, but he, it's something that was one of the most important things in my entire life. And he's gone. And I had one chance. And I didn't take it. I'm not going to let that happen again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and appreciate people more. And I'm going to try and appreciate the things that people do for me more. I miss him already. I never knew the guy. I never said one word to him. But I miss him. But they'll always be his work. And I said it, I said it before about Gene Wilder when he died. I said he, he lives on in the laughter. And C. Martin Croker lives on in my heart. 
and in the hearts of people who loved those characters that he voiced and the characters he animated and even the people who didn't even realize he existed they'll remember him without even knowing it and he's still alive for all intents and purposes <laughs> Hope you're doing all right. It's been a rough one for me. I'm sorry for breaking down like that. I'm I'm not in a bad mood. I'm in a good mood for the most part. But talking about this, it's upsetting. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.